Tony Khan's company made some big old moves in 2023. What's coming next year then? If the content of this list is anything to go by, then it'll be a volley of absolute nightmares. Time to bite some elite fingernails, baby. Because I am Gareth, this is What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 AEW nightmares that could come true in 2024. Number 10, AEW signs even more wrestlers. Take a quick glance through the AEW roster page on Wikipedia, and you'll be scrolling for ages. The sheer volume of pro wrestlers on Tony Khan's books is staggering. And that's just the full-timers. Other floaters, such as Will Ospreay or one-off workers like Mystico, are not included. Signing more talent would be ridiculous at this point. AEW can barely find time on programming for all of the wrestlers they already have. So it'd be something else if Tony dipped back into his wallet and stumped up cash for another round. Dynamite, Collision, Rampage and ROH can't accommodate everybody. And that's just the way it is. Wrestling promotions rarely learn from history though. WCW loaded the roster to excess, and WWE has been guilty of the same several times over the decades. AEW is falling into a similar trap. This might sound harsh and no fan wants to see anybody lose a paying gig, but would you notice if a good 25% of the workers were cut? Eh, probably not. Number 9, the pay-per-view schedule blows up. AEW will have produced no less than 7 pay-per-views in 2023 by the time credits roll on full gig come November 18th. That's two more than 2022 and three more than any prior year. It looks like management will continue piling on the big events heading into next year too. Hey, if there's a demand for content, then there's a demand for content. How much is too much though? All Elite pay-per-views should feel special, not least because there's no monthly subscription model like the WWE Network slash Peacock to lessen the burden on fan bank accounts, at least of time of recording. 10 to 12 AEW super shows per year might be overkill. The New Japan crossovers Forbidden Door and Wrestle Dream could probably be axed easily. Sure, the latter was a touching tribute to Antonio Inoki, but it maybe shouldn't become an annual offering. Keeping the core revolution, double or nothing, all in slash all out and full gear formula is perfectly fine. But I've got a quick question for you. What has been your favourite AEW pay-per-view to date? Let me know in the comment section right down below. Number 8. WWE Incomers Bomb on Ratings TNA found out first hand many moons ago that front-loading your product with ex-WWE stars didn't necessarily guarantee high ratings. There's something to be said for the power of the WWE brand and marketing machine. It's often way more important to drawing eyeballs than individual names, with few exceptions. It'd really suck if someone like Adam Copeland couldn't bring the nose up on AEW's TV scores. The former Edge is banking on himself post-WWE, and the dude only wants to have some more killer matches before calling career time on his own terms. That should be appealing to a casual fan base, but nothing is certain. What if the ratings stay exactly the same? Or worse, they get lower. Obviously, wrestling companies measure more metrics than TV ratings these days. They're still a valuable indicator of general interest in the product, though. So Tony Khan definitely won't want to see figures plummet heading into the new year. Number 7, they add yet another TV show. Dynamite and Collision are two hours long apiece, and the C-Show Rampage on Fridays is a shorter 60 minutes. Then, AEW offers some ROH content elsewhere, and often puts on other specials like Battle of the Belts, pay-per-view pre-shows, and miscellaneous preview content. That's more than enough, to be honest. So another show is something they should definitely avoid. Raking in those sweet advertising dollars is an essential business practice, but it's already hurting some aspects of the existing program lineup. All of those pesky picture-in-picture -picture ad breaks take viewers away from a show they're watching to hype up the next portion. It's like eating one cake but having another shoved in your face at the same time. Such is life in the what have you done for me lately world of television. Dynamite, Collision, Rampage and Ring of Honor equals a hefty enough workload for all elite creative to power through. The process is already spread just a little too thin and there's zero call for more. Number 6, domestic attendances don't improve. Some folks on Twitter slash X appear to revel in splashing feeds full of pics showing empty seats at Dynamite slash Rampage and Collision tapings. This is one weird quirk to some wrestling fans. They enjoy when things go wrong, and the growing sense of tribalism between major companies has only fueled that desire to point fingers and laugh. Truthfully, scanning credible sources like WrestleNomics or WrestleTix does show that AEW's domestic ticket sales aren't exactly booming. But that's surely nothing to smirk about. Fans should want every company to do well, so it's hardly pleasing that Tony Khan has to type off upper decks and dim the lights like WCW in 2000. Thank God for TV rights, money, merchandise, and other measurable 
metrics, eh? It'd be remarkable if AEW's TV ticket sales shot through the roof in 2024. To get there, they've got to make tapings feel like a must-have for locals in the area. Expanding the touring circuit and perhaps visiting some towns a little less could help there. But that is just a layman's suggestion. What do I know, eh? Number 5. Wembley Suffers Diminishing Returns Wembley Stadium looked resplendent for All In this past summer. This guy knows because he was there. But even selling a ton of tickets for a literal stadium couldn't stop some from posting pics of empty red seats high up in the nosebleeds. That was another depressing commentary on fan culture. Even so, there are worries amongst those who want AEW to do well that the next trip to London could be a bit of a struggle. Diminishing returns will always be something promotions have to think about when they dip back into the same marketplace even 12 months apart. And Wembley is huge. AEW could get by on strength of novelty and anticipation alone in 2023. They will not be able to do things the same way come 2024. No, Tony Khan will need to build matches people trip over one another to see. And even that may not be enough to match this year's number. Disputed or not, the attendance in 2023 was a massive success. Fingers crossed next year isn't a humbling experience. Number four, the world title becomes a hot potato. At time of recording, MJF has held the AEW world title for over 330 days. He won the thing way back in November 2022 and is still going strong even after turning from hated heel to he's a scumbag but he's our scumbag babyface. Hopefully the creative types are busy figuring out what comes next. Friedman won't hold the gold forever but more on that later. So follow-up plans will be needed. Another long-standing champ would fit the company better than a series of workers playing hot potato with the strap too. But panic might well set in once the MJF run ends. John Moxley would be a safe pair of hands again. And Tony Khan will probably try to push someone fresher to the moon like he did with Friedman and Hangman Page before. Swerve be this guy's pick. The worst case outcome is that AEW's top prize plays past the parcel and each subsequent title reign feels more meaningless than the last as a result. No thanks to that. Number three, MJF leaves. Currently, MJF's AEW contract is still slated to expire in early January 2024. The reigning world champion will be in no rush to sit down and thrash out an extension either because he'll know he can play AEW and WWE against each other to maximize his asking price. That's smart business and it's bound to happen. Friedman reportedly inked a fresh set of terms for more money without extending the length of his contract too. How he managed that is anyone's guess. But the man himself gave Ariel Helwani this hot scoop last year. So MGF is still free to see what Triple H has to say in the new year. Losing a largely homegrown sensation like Friedman would be disastrous for AEW. The guy has become the breakout star for Tony Khan. And his beautiful combo of charisma and confidence would make him a top addition to the WWE roster. AEW hardcores will be praying that MJF doesn't do a Jade Cargill or Cody Rhodes. Number two, Tony Khan has more WWE meltdowns. There's no need to sugarcoat this. Tony Khan embarrassed himself with a series of online meltdowns recently. Throughout, the AEW boss came across as a petulant teenage boy let loose on social media for the very first time. Worse, cries that all publicity is good publicity fall flat because of one annoying fact. Tony was lashing out at WWE, not necessarily promoting his own product. Everyone from Triple H to John Cena and The Undertaker caught some shade from Khan during his spectacular Twitter slash X rants when Dynamite and NXT went head to head. This isn't something that should be encouraged come the new year. Someone probably just needs to sit TK down and have a word. It's baffling that some out there seem to think Tony firing bald a-hole barbs at the likes of Hunter and Shawn Michaels will help AEW in any way. If anything, it just makes the company's figurehead look daft. And like he's all over the place emotionally. And offends our beloved community. Stop such madness, I say. Number one, WWE moves Raw to Wednesdays. Mid-report on news that SmackDown is jumping to the USA Network in October 2024, Dave Meltzer also claimed there's a good chance WWE will move Raw from its traditional Monday slot to a new night of the week around the same time. The Wrestling Observer Chief named Wednesday as one possible choice. You know, when AEW Dynamite airs? If this is gonna happen, and that is a big if, then it'd only really impact All Elite Wrestling for the final few months of the year at most. Still, going head-to-head -head with WWE's flagship broadcast isn't something Tony Khan should entertain. That might force him to think about shifting Dynamite to another night. AEW doesn't want to get trounced in the ratings every Wednesday. Christ, that'd be miserable. But it's a very real possibility. All Elite's best struggles to beat WWE's third string NXT program. So toppling Raw would be a bit far-fetched, really. If Meltzer is right, and the adored It's Wednesday, you know what that means. 
Wolverine's intro line from Excalibur could be toast, or at least replaced with another day of the week. But who wants such a thing? And that's our list. Know any other AEW nightmares that could come true in 2024? Well, let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Cheers for checking out this lovely video today. Hopefully we'll see you again very soon, but in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Bye-bye.